So it's finally happening. The Eastern Front is coming to the console versions of Hell Let Loose. And we have the date, which is May the 17th. And it's coming at 12 p.m. BST or 7 a.m. EST on both platforms. Now, I'm going to give you a brief overview of what you're going to expect in this new update and remind you it is a free update. But before I quickly go into those, please subscribe to the channel. If you want more Hell Let Loose news, updates, streams, tips, guides, and gameplay videos, then that's what I do. Subscribe, and I hope you enjoy the content. Now let's check out the three new maps you're getting in the Eastern Front update, Stalingrad, Kursk, and an updated version of Samurai Demont. So this is Stalingrad. I actually really enjoy playing on Stalingrad. It is mainly an urban map, but there are some larger, more open areas because of the well, bombed out areas which is well really the entire map the middle section of the map which is this train tracks area this they can be really quite difficult to fight through so you will have some probably long battles just capturing the middle points but the other points especially on the soviet starting side which is over here near the river are pretty damn good you get these twin buildings here which is pavlov's house i believe and you can actually go into these buildings by nearly every single floor and fight through them and this is another point here and again it's another building you can go through every single floor and fight through it you don't get anything like this in any other hell let loose map these sort of bigger urban structures so i hope something like that comes to other maps for hell let loose in future and this is more of the german starting area we're over here at the minute and uh, you get this interesting sort of industrial factory area. But I think really the, the star locations of this map are over on the Soviet side. When it initially launched in the PC version, it was called Stuttergrad because it was really stuttery and performed really badly for a lot of people. Now I think Stutt Stuttergrad, <laughs> Stalingrad is the main reason why it's taken so long to get the console version out. But I really enjoy it, and I hope you guys will enjoy this map too. So this is Kursk. We're in the middle of the map at the moment, right over here. These windmills are usually a big focus of fighting throughout the game. You can get some decent infantry combat up here. A lot of snipers tend to um, get in top of these windmills because you know you can see a lot, especially overlooking the Soviet side, which is over there, and the German side over there. Can't really see the German side that well. But you can see down the middle of the map through this window and this one. But they're really obvious sniper points. So whenever you can you can uh, see the windmills, just have a look because you'll probably see a sniper up there. Now the main middle of the map, which is this small little village called Yamki, you'll get some great infantry combat amongst these buildings and over there. But really, as you can see, this map is very, very open. There's a lot of trench networks. But this is mainly a tank map. Tanks utterly <laughs> destroy and will be able to rule this map. Really what can determine which team wins is how effective your tanks are at pushing towards the middle. Because if you get in a good position, say like the Germans can get up to here. You can nearly well, you can actually see the Russian or well, Soviets spawn point. So you can take out their tanks as soon as they start driving out their spawn. And over here as well. That also means that the Soviets, if they can push up to this point as well, they can overlook the German area. Kursk, I'm not a big fan of Kursk because it is really open and, well, it's mainly like a tanker map. But if you get the active middle point, which for me at the minute right now is Yamki, as infantry, you'll have a good time fighting over there, definitely. But out of the two maps, I definitely prefer Stalingrad. So, Samurai de Mont, this is version 2. This is the actual town or village itself, if you compare this to how it currently looks in the console version. It's very different. There are a lot more buildings, a lot more detail, a lot more bigger buildings. And it is just a much vastly improved map before 
the town or village itself, I think, was down the bottom left corner, and this main road, I think, went up through the middle of the map, I believe. But you can see now it's sort of moved over and the whole map sort of twisted a bit. So some of the old parts of the map are now gone and this introduced some new ones. But there are still some bits over here. Um, I've just gone out of admin view. Let's go back in. The breakor guns, which are up here, are still there. That's the breakor manor, I think, from the, we'll say, the old version of the map. Where's the breakable guns? There's the breakable guns. So you can see this area has changed. I think that's the manor actually. But that's very different. That's actually a good place to fight over. You can get inside there, get a garrison down. Usually you'll find someone trying to put a garrison down here. But this version of the map, again, more detailed. And I think it is better than version 1 of Samurai Demon. Of course, with the new update, you're getting some brand new weapons. So here is the PPSH, the stick mag version. It's just standard SMG. Could be one of the best SMGs in the game because it still kills in two shots up to 50 meters and four shots afterwards. But it can kill people quicker because of the higher fire rate. It also has a drum mag version where you can hold like 72 rounds, I think. So it can be a very powerful weapon. The semi-automatic rifle is the SVT-40. Pretty much works exactly the same as the M1 Garand and the G43. Very good rifle. And the Soviets get three versions of like the standard bolt action rifle. Here you have the Mosin 1891. The worst bolt action in the game because of the iron sights. A shortened version called the M38. And the more standard Mosin, the 9130. And all three of these bolt actions, one shot kill up to 200 meters and two shots afterwards. The machine gun, the DP-27. I haven't used it that much just because I'm not a machine gun guy, but I think it is the weakest machine gun in the game. Now your snipers, you get the Mosin sniper. I'm not sure if this is going to be bugged for the console version because it's currently bugged for the PC version now where it does a one shot kill up to any range like the other bolt action snipers. Hopefully that fix will come soon, but the semi-auto sniper is the SVT-40 and that is a beast of a weapon to use. And their anti-tank rifle, the PTRS-41. It's not really designed to destroy tanks, mainly disable them so your tanks or AT guns can get into good positions or you can get people to move up and get a subtle charge down on them. But you also get an extra weapon for the US forces and here is the trench gun, the shotgun basically. It's not actually a really good gun but it's one of the most satisfying guns to use in the game because if you kill someone at close range it can just turn them into chunks of meat. And the Germans get the FG42 for the automatic rifleman. It is a pretty good gun, but it's more difficult to use than the STG. Has less ammo and has less and has less bullets per mag. And then you also get a scoped variant as well, which again is a very good weapon. Now, of course, with the new weapons, you get the Soviet versions of their equipment, which you know it's like watch, bandage, wrench, all that sort of stuff. You get their versions of trucks as well. There are some slight loadout changes in the game. The Soviets also get a unique commander ability, while the Americans and the Germans get the bomb and run, the Soviets get the Kyusha strike. And here it is in action. You call it in from the commander menu, like the bomb and run, and it hits like a large circle sort of radius area. It's not accurate at all, as you can see from this, but it does go on for quite a while, so you can either sort of keep people hiding away in buildings or if you're lucky you can take out a bunch of infantry if you're planning to use this to take out tanks it's not really going to happen but seeing this in action and being in the middle of it is really damn good and yeah that's the new content come to the console versions hopefully you'll be getting update 11 which is what the pc version is currently at soon and the pc version is changing to update 12 soon so hopefully You'll be brought up to date quick and you won't have to wait six months to get another update. As I said earlier, please subscribe to the channel if you're interested in Hell Let Loose. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.